never read the book. Or if I had, I didn't remember it. Um, then I kind of got excited about it because like I used to be in the ad business where I had to create a product for something. I thought, oh, you know, that'll be fun. Like I have a real project. Um, so then, um, then I felt terror again because I read the book twice <laughs> saying, oh boy, this is kind of dark, but not all dark. Um, he's kind of this, Peter, but he's not really all that. There's a lot of incredibly strong visuals. How am I going to even do that or not? And everybody's already painted Peter Pan's <laughs> beautiful paintings of Peter, Peter Pan, movies, things. And so he's so embedded in everybody's visual memories that there was definitely, there's terror to it. Um, I'll get through the terror and it'll end up being fun. Okay, there were, there were several things I, I did to research. Um, one is I had to actually read the book. Um, I, I had these preconceived notions based on Disney and everything else and uh, we all have images in our head of Peter Pan, Wendy and, and everybody else and Hook. So I had to read the book because I don't remember having read it as a kid. And that was, of course, the best research. And then I said to myself, all right, let me see what other people have done with Peter Pan. I was reticent about doing that to see everybody else's images, but everybody has done so many different depictions of Peter Pan from, from um, ballet performances to illustrators from you know the original illustration all the way on through that it kind of gave me a good feel for that, that there was no one way that Peter had to be. And the other thing was uh, I called the director of, you know, that's going to be doing it at Burning Coal. And uh, I wanted to know the actor, you know, how old were the actors? Was it going to be based on the book? And she told me quite a few things that actually um, probably influenced most where I'm putting the scene uh, that I ended up choosing. Um, it, and that's, that's, the influence really did you know come from all those things there's so many visuals every page every paragraph is so rich that being able to focus on any one thing that's relevant to a the story and b a poster is really hard to do um and part of the hard thing for me was there are some scenes that are very natural for me to paint that i was attracted to immediately but in looking at it and, and, and thinking, okay, how am I gonna do that? And also incorporate everybody, all the other characters without it looking ridiculous. So that's the hardest part. So you go through the whole creative process like, oh, okay, is it just one figure and nothing else? Is it uh, a graphic design where you have like the old movie poster? Is it, and what happens to me is I go through this whole process in my head. Uh, I jot them down. Um, I have an iPad app where I actually drew different paintings out in different places that take place in the book. And frankly, the, the way I decided about where I was gonna go was based on A, having spoken with the director, but B, where I could make Peter be actually the main, he is the center of the universe and of everybody's desire. And so I kinda came back to that that really is um, the, the thing for me to paint that would be truest to my painting. What I first did was I, I painted on an iPad and an app. Initially, whatever I felt might be a scene or a movie. Um, and I did about four or five of those. Uh, and I did one that, you know, I did the first one, I thought, oh, that's pretty good. And then I would go back a day later and go, oh, you know what? I'm not sure that's going to work. And then I did another one and say, ah, that's too, you know, obvious. So I did that at first. Then I spoke to the director. And then I found out that it's going to be a great deal about Wendy, uh, Wendy's perspective. And a lot of it's going to take place, as it does in the book, in the bedroom. A lot of it takes place in the window. And even though there's fabulous visuals of him on a rock with the water coming up, and I tried all that, the window just symbolizes everything going from your world into mine. And so I realized I had to do something with that window to make it work. Um, so, that's, so that's the concept part. 
Um, the other thing was who's in the painting with him in the window, okay? Um, I did a version where he was, she, uh, she was sewing his shadow on. Um, then I thought, ah, that really looks like an illustration. I could go back to that. Um, and by the way, I could, you know, trash what I do and just start over. It, it happens, but anyhow, I did, so I decided, okay, Peter is irresistible, he's alluring, he's manipulative, he's the object of Wendy's desire, therefore our desire as a viewer. So what I decided to do was to have him beckoning her with an outstretched hand, which is very, you know, just very simple, but very powerful as he's going from her world to his world. We don't need to see her. We don't want to see her because we are Wendy. So, so these are just some sketches just showing, you know, different body positions of, you know, what he might like going through the window. Is the window going to be at an angle? Is it not going to be at an angle? Is it going to be head on? What are we going to see around the window? Are we going to see the moon? I did a background wash in blues because it's going to be cool outside and warm inside. So I'm just sort of setting up. And the other thing is I want to cover all that white on the canvas, it's just easier. This is all work in progress um, because what happens is it's almost like a sketch. It's not very precise. I'm never precise in the beginning. This is why I, have, I, tell, I don't like people to watch my paintings while I'm doing a commission because I may have a mirror over here. I may, in halfway through the painting, say, well, that just doesn't work and move it over here behind the curtain. So I start like this and then in this you know, think, okay, uh, you know, here's Peter. Um, I'm just trying to get his body language down. Forget the face, okay, because that might not be the face. But, you know, how much window do I want to see? Do I want to see all that space behind there? Now it becomes about composition as well. So, is there an opportunity here to incorporate some of the fantastic visuals that happen in the book? The the Lost Children, Captain Hook, the, Wendy, the Flying Kids, obviously Tinkerbell, the Fairy Dust. How can I incorporate that kind of thing here? You know, will he have fairy dust blowing out of his hand? I just thought of that now. Um, I wanted to try to take advantage of, you know, if there's going to be toys, if there's going to be, you know, the shapes of the buildings, if something can symbolize something that we saw in Neverland without, um, you know, you know, literally having like the whole painting, you know, have little Neverland graphics around it to try to bring it into the story. That's going to be hard to do. No one might even see it or get it, but um, I think I'm going to try to do that. After, you know, because this research I've been doing for well, like a couple weeks, once you actually get down to the painting, it tends to go, you know, fairly smoothly. Mm -hmm.